Hey folks, this is Matt once again. <coughs> and uh, this time I bring you Casino Royale. No, I did not see the original Casino Royale. I don't care to. But Casino Royale, I enjoy this film. I've even watched it again. I enjoy this film. Figure I'd throw this and Quan Masala's in because I reviewed all the other James Bond films. I reviewed Skyfall way back when it came out, so why not review Casino Royale? This is a two disc version, which I didn't realize until recently it shows how stupid I am. This actually has a Bond Girls Are Forever, which I know my friend Avery was telling me about, so I'm like, okay, th this two disc actually has that. <clears throat> now, Casino Royale was the first Bond they made after a lot of talk of where to go after Pierce Brosnan died another day. <clears throat> and Pierce Brosnan wanted to play Bond again. He didn't retire the role. He didn't quit. In fact, I think at one time Tarantino wanted to do Casino Royale. Quentin Tarantino himself. And he said, I'll do it, but I want Pierce Brosnan. But it's like, well, Casino Royale... Pretty much tells Bond's sort of, I don't know if I want to say origin, but how he got his 007 license to kill. How he got his 007 mark. And, you know, that would have to have a younger actor, and Pierce Brosnan was deemed too old. So they didn't recast Pierce Brosnan. I think, I remember hearing that Pierce Brosnan was actually pretty mad, pretty pissed, because he enjoyed playing Bond. But unfortunately, that wasn't how it was supposed to be. And they got Martin Campbell, who did Goldeneye, to direct this film. And they cast Daniel Craig, who... A lot of people shit on Daniel Craig, even before this film came out. I know how that goes. I mean, I did the same... I'm doing the same thing for Robocop remake and Joel Kinnaman. So, I know how that goes. But, uh... You know, Robocop, I cared about more. And James Bond, I'm like, okay, James Bond, do James Bond. To me, it didn't really bother me because there's been so many other James Bonds. There's Sean Connery, there's George Lazenby. It's like, okay, a new James Bond that just made, you know, sort of same stuff, different day. It was Timothy Dalton to Pierce Brosnan, now Brosnan to Daniel Craig. And Daniel Craig, I think, does an excellent job as James Bond. I think he's, I really also like him in Cowboys and Aliens. I will admit, I even like the film called Dream House. I'm one of the few, but I like Dreamhouse. I thought Daniel Craig was good in that. I mean, Daniel Craig, Cowboys and Aliens, I think, is underrated. <clears throat> and I think Daniel Craig plays this role very well. He's intense, and he has a good look to him. He's suave. He handles the action scenes really well. Really well. And Casino Royale... You can tell from the game, Martin Campbell, like, GoldenEye was Bond for the 90s, it's going to be Bond for the new millennium, so to speak. And right off the bat, you have this guy who's this MI6 trader selling secrets, and James Bond is like, it's all shot in black and white, and James Bond, this is pretty much how he's going to get his 007 title, so to speak. And fucks that guy up pretty cold and ruthlessly, just boom. And also explains, and you see a little bit of James Bond fucking this guy up in the bathroom. It really shows how the action scenes are going to be brutal and fast and uh, pretty hardcore. That this James Bond's not fucking around, he's going to beat the shit out of you. And then does that famous, you know, to the camera to kill the guy and sort of the barrel of the gun. And then you have this song called You Know My Name, which I, I like the song. Uh, Chris Cornell did the song, You Know My Name. And then you have this excellent, excellent action sequence to start off with where James Bond, one thing leads to another, is chasing this guy who knows, uh, I think that it's called parkour, parkour, like free running. Like this guy is like fucking jackrabbit. Do, 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 do. Just run like a motherfucker. And James Bond is keeping up. And you see a lot of the scenes is Daniel Craig himself. 
and he's trying to keep up and they're going through this construction site to a point where you know James Bond's having to tear through the wall or James Bond has to slide under to get down here and he's just they're using his head so the parkour guy is able to pretty much swing all the fuck over here so James Bond gets in this thing gets a wrench hits it and then slides all the way down um, and James Bond don't give a fuck he goes into I think the embassy and is like fucking the guy up and fucks the guy up and he thinks he's caught and he has no choice so you think he's given up and he just goes boo boo shoots the guy and shoots the fucking uh, this barrel a huge explosion so he can get away it's a really excellent action sequence very well done and I understood what was going on I understood every the location the environment it wasn't too shaky it wasn't too oh shit what the fuck happened I like Chroma Solace, but that's the problem that Chroma Solace has. It's too much shaky, too much fast cutting. This, I don't think, really had that, in my opinion. One thing leads to know, he finds out about the guy. Uh, he goes to the Bahamas. He wins this guy's car and cars, seduces the guy's wife in order to find some info, which leads him to Miami, where. Um, this guy he's following tries to kill Bond, but Bond fucks him up first. And he finds out that there's this guy who's gonna fuck up this prototype airliner. So you have this, again, well done action sequence where James Bond's chasing this guy pretty much on the tarmac. On top of this vehicle, he's about ready to hit another vehicle. And vehicle. James Bond has to get the fuck out of the way. And it ends in a pretty cool note because James Bond stops the truck. And I like this little uh, fun moment where he barely stops and just from his look on his face, kind of looks like how close he was. I just like his reaction. But then, like, the bad guy like, had a bomb, but without him noticing, Bond actually attached the fucking bomb to his keychain. So the guy does this, and he's like looking around and looks down, and you just see Bond's reaction boom! <laughs> I thought that was really cool sort of uh, trick in the bad guy's ass. And the reason the bad guys were doing this is there's this guy, Lashif, I think was the bad guy's name. Basically what he does is he kind of works with this terrorist group to arrange these attacks to fuck up this stuff so that uh, people we work with are going to get a shitload of money. Something to do, I think, with stocks. So the fuck up their prices or something like that. Primus helps engineer these terrorist attacks, but instead he loses these guys a shitload of money. And so, and basically, what this guy has to do now is be in this poker tournament, where his bond is going to be in this poker tournament as well, and try to win the money back. Basically, if Bond wins, then the bad guys fucked in the ass from the terrorists and if he wins then they pretty much finance terrorism so and that's where Bond meets this girl I thought this girl did a great job I think her name's Ever Evergreen I believe that's her um, she really does a good job I think her and Daniel Cray work well off each other together uh, she's like the money money bad girl so to speak you know, she's the one who's going to finance James Bond into it. And it just worked well. I think they worked each other well. I thought the romance worked well. You bought that these two were falling in love. Uh, I think probably last time I saw something like this in a Bond film, like I saw this first before a lot of the older ones. First I saw was GoldenEye and Pierce Brosnan, then I saw these, and then I saw all the older ones that I reviewed. But Our Majesty's Secret Service is probably the last one that actually had a somewhat actual love story to it. And this as well. And I think, you know, that helps. And I think this is a, a damn good one. Damn good Bond film. Uh, they Like, there's a moment where you have this pretty badass fight in the stairwell with some bad guys. And then she's in the shower sort of shivering and James Bond just sits by her and puts his arm around her. I thought that was a really nice, touching moment. 
But then basically James Bond loses his poker, but then he meets his CIA agent, Felix. You have Felix introduced. This is played by Jeffrey Wright, who's a good actor. And the girl won't put the money in for some reason. You find out later why. But the CIA guy, Felix, says, okay, we'll put up the money for you. We just want this guy. And then the bad guy tries to poison Bond. I thought that was a really interesting scene where he got talk to MI6 and try to, you know, shock himself. And the girl helps shock himself. And then James Bond's like, are you all right? And he's like, am I all right? <laughs> I don't know. I just like the way that scene played off. It kind of made me laugh. Just, you know, Bond, the first thing he goes is, are you all right? He's like, you're the one who just got poisoned. And then Bond wins the poker game, and the guy's like fucked in the ass by the terrorists. Uh, girl's taken, and yeah, that shot that you saw in all the trailers where James Bond's chasing, and she's in the row, and he swerves and flips the fucking car. And then you have the torture scene where he's naked, and this guy has his rope, and you just pretty much hit his dick, you're hitting his balls. And it's really just a painful thing. But yeah, I like Bond in the scene, he's like laughing, he's like. <laughs> Yeah, you know what's funny is that you're gonna die. People are gonna know you died scratching my balls. I thought that was pretty funny. Cause he knows that this guy's fucked because he lost like hundred million dollars for these fucking terrorist guys, and lo and behold, that's what happens. But then, for some reason, Bond is left alive, and you're wondering, well, how come? How come? <clears throat> but then, you know, you have some scenes where him and the girl they fall in love. And Bond is going to resign and, you know, early retirement, things like that. But then you find out that the money, all that money, was never deposited. So Bond knows that something's up with this girl and follows her. And then you get this big uh, finale gunfight in this building where pretty much the entire building is crumbling down and falling down into the water. Well done action sequence. Well done. Understood what was going on. And then the girl apologizes and actually locks herself in the elevator cell to, to die. And Bond's like, you know, trying to get her out, but unsuccessful. And then you find out the whole thing was, uh, before, from what I understand, could be wrong, I'm always, I can be wrong from time to time. But from what I understand, the girl, before all this happened, her boyfriend was taken. And... You know, she was blackmailed into doing this. Into doing this stuff. And, you know, that's why... How Bond lost, because maybe she told the guy the tell. Because Bond was, like, you know, telling her about this tell. And you think it's this guy, like... I forget what the actor's name, Giancarlo Giannini or something... I know he the guy was in Hannibal. You think it was this guy? Maybe he's still a bad guy, but it could be this girl too who told the bad guy about his tell at poker. So that's how Bond lost, and that's why the girl wouldn't give him the extra five million to go in. So yeah, they get the CIA help. Um, but then that's also a reason why Bond was still alive, because the girl goes, "No, no, no! I will give you the money. Just let Bond live." And that's what she was doing here was she was bringing them the money so that Bond would live. And then Bond finds her phone, and she actually texted the Bond what the guy's name was, Mr. White, and where he's at. So yeah, really badass ending where the guy, motherfucker, gets shot in the leg. And then there's James Bond standing with that machine gun, going, name's Bond. James Bond. I, I really enjoy this film. I mean, if I don't have any problems... Um... It feels a little too long. It is two hours and 20-some minutes. It's definitely one of the longest Bond films. I can't remember how long Skyfall is, but I don't know how long... I forgot how long Skyfall was. I, Skyfall, I think, that was my problem, too. It felt too long. This one feels a little too long as well. It's, again, two hours and 24 minutes, give or take. It feels a little bit too long. Um... But uh, Judy, Judy Dench comes back as M. 
Even though this doesn't really connect to the Pierce Bronze one, this is kind of, I guess you would call it a reboot in a way. I don't know if you call this a prequel, you just call it a reboot. I don't know what you call it. But entertaining action scenes, I think Daniel Craig does a really great job. I think all the acting is solid. I can't really complain about the acting. The action scenes are well directed by Martin Campbell. The has a good little love story that's a little bit touching. Uh, great first step for Daniel Craig as James Bond. I think it's a very solid film. It deserves the praise it gets. Is it my favorite Bond film? No, but it's still a solid one. So thanks for watching, and see you later.